Chairmanship, and uh, I do congratulate my honourable friend for Chelmsford, uh, not only for securing this debate, but for her excellent contribution. I attended the SEND reform event last uh, week, which was a great opportunity to speak to specialists in the area. Through their manifesto, they circulated the event, was the point that 24% of identified SEND pupils have an ECHP and 390,000 pupils in 2023. Additionally, they report that 97% of school leaders think funding for all SEND pupils is insufficient, and 95% think this for those with the ECHPs. Now, during the COVID period, I had weekly online meetings with county leaders and my fellow Gloucestershire MPs, where the challenges facing schools was often discussed. There was huge concern from some students dropping out of the system, not engaging with online learning through the lockdown period, and not returning to schools when they fully reopened. And some of the aspect that the Honourable Member for the City of Durham has described through the, her school being closed through RAC, which I sympathise with, um, actually applied, of course, to pupils across the entire United Kingdom when their schools were closed um, during COVID. So uh, I think we're all well familiar with, with the effects of schools being closed. Nevertheless, I do sympathise with what happened in her school. The overall absence rate for primary and secondary schools in Gloucestershire during the autumn term 22-23 was 7.3%. And this compares to the 6.6% in the autumn term of 2021, having consistently been below the 5% pre-pandemic level. This pattern of increased absence since the pandemic can be seen in national statistical and southwest groupings. And according to the government website across England, in both autumn and spring terms 22-23, the overall absence rate was 7.3%. 21.2% of pupils were persistently absent across the autumn and spring terms of 22-23, meaning they missed 10% or more sessions. This is an exceptionally large number of students missing classes. And I, too, listened to my honourable, right honourable friend, the member for the schools, addressing the chamber in the other place, and he made the point that the data for persistent absenteeism will be published this Thursday. Now, we don't know what it will show, but hopefully it will show an improved uh, uh, situation. There is, of course, a huge impact on academic su success of students persistently absent from schools. With just 11.3% of severely absent pupils achieving grades 9 to 4, 4 being the pass grade in English and maths, compared to 67.6% .6 of all pupils. And whilst we can't look totally at statistics, Mr. Twig, in this debate. We can look at measures uh, for it, it, it measures such as social and mental impact on these pupils. And I being, believe, as I have other members have said, particularly my honourable friend for Chelmsford, being persistently absent from school will have similarly negative impacts on those other aspects of a young person's mm. life. Uh, a big, does, does the Minister wish to... Sorry. No. Um, I absolutely totally agree with not only what the Minister for School said in the main chamber, but also my honourable friend for Chelmsford. School is the best place to be to learn for their social development, for making friendships, uh, for their uh, overall physical development. It is much better that they're in school uh, rather than being absent. So during COVID, I saw a considerable increase in casework on this issue, which has continued, sadly, in the years since. Parents getting in touch with me regarding their children who are long-term absent from school, asking me to help them engage with schools on how to move forward with their children's education. These cases were usually exacerbated by the complex mental health and educational needs problems, which made regular attendance for pupils a more challenging prospect. Liaising with parents and schools, it became clear that in many cases, there had been a complete breakdown in the relationship, with students being the ones to ultimately suffer. Teachers were being overextended on what they could achieve, understandably, with the pressures of trying to teach during lockdowns. They simply didn't have the capacity to provide extensive support needed for some pupils, while parents felt overwhelmed with dealing with the educational needs of their children without support. Ultimately, as my honourable friend has said, the responsibility, the legal responsibility for pupils attending school falls on the parents. 
But unfortunately, due to often complicated socioeconomic factors and individual family challenges, there are a considerable number of families who are simply unable or unwilling to engage fully with their children's educational needs. We should not allow these children to fall out of the educational system. And I do agree with uh, my honourable friend and others, and indeed the minister in the main chamber, who said that we should have a compulsory register for home education so that we can see where the children are being educated at home or whether they are abs absent from school. And then we can take the necessary measures to do something about it. So growing demand for mental health service and SEND support centres creates an additional pressure, compounding a problem that became far worse during the COVID lockdown period. The Education Committee examined this problem, launching their inquiry into persistent absence and support for disadvantaged pupils in January 2023. Their report, published in September, made a number of recommendations, including a review and possible abolition of fines, which they found made little or no impact on long-term absenteeism. And, and they said, an urgent need to improve school level at attendance monitoring and the need for investment in SEND and children and adolescent mental health services, uh, CAMS, which they concluded as significant factors in attendance crisis. The government is increasing the direct support offered to children and their families with the expansion of the attendance monitor pilot programme with an investment of up to £15 million over three years. And this programme will provide direct intensive support to more than 10,000 persistent and severely absent pupils with their families. And I think the Minister for Schools did say in the main debate where this is um, being expanded to. And I'm pretty sure that I heard that it's expanding to the Honourable Lady, the city, member of the City of Durham's area, but she will no doubt correct me if that is wrong. The government has also produced a toolkit for schools, providing tips and evidence-based adaptable templates for communicating with parents and carers, as well as the plan announced last year to expand, expand attendance hubs, delivering 18 new hubs. This is a knowledge and practice exchange initiative, taking the lead from those schools with excellent attendance uh, records to introduce engagement initiatives like breakfast clubs and extracurricular activities or improve an individual school's attendance data. And I've just listened to my right honourable friend for schools, member for East Hampshire, outline a compendium of measures to help pupils return to school. On a county level, Mr Twig, well, block... Order, order. The sitting is resumed. The debate may continue until 5.45. Uh, I call Sir Geoffrey Clinton-Brown. I'm grateful to you for your forbearance um, during the debate in the main chamber, and I'm delighted to be able to resume my speech. Um, just to very quickly recap what I, the last bit of the speech before we had to suspend the sitting, I was praising the government for their attendance monitoring pilot programmes, and in particular, uh, expanding the attendance hub, delivering 18 new hubs, which, of course, does what much of what my right honourable friends, private members still, does, uh, as disseminating best practice amongst all the agencies, teachers, parents, everybody involved, to try and uh, deal with this problem about absenteeism. So I wholly support her bill, and I do apologise to her. I think I inadvertently downgraded her. Uh, she is, of course, the right honourable friend, not, the, not my, my honourable friend, so I'm, I do apologise for her for that. So um, I, I then was going on to say, at a county level, Gloucestershire County Council provides support, advice, guidance for schools throughout the inclusion officer team. This includes a specialist attendance officer who can support more targeted intervention work where needed. So leveraging technology to improve engagement and accessibility is also essential. 
Online learning platforms, digital resources, and interactive teaching methods can cater to diverse learning styles and ensure that students remain connected to their studies, even in challenging circumstances which prevent them attending in person. It is vital, as I've already said and so many others have said, that we do not allow these students to be left behind. Regardless of how complex the reasons are for long-term absence in an individual, all children deserve a chance at the education, social and physical opportunities that schools have to offer. From my own constituency cases, it is clear that many parents do need the additional support of schools and others to assist with their children staying in education. By investing in early intervention, mental health support, addressing socio-economic disparities and embracing technological advancements, we can all work towards creating an education system that is inclusive, supportive and ensures that every child has the opportunity to realise their full potential. I, on Friday, visited uh, Andover's primary school in my constituency to speak with the head teacher about challenges facing the schools. It was an excellent visit and a good chance to speak to teachers, pupils and parents. And whilst the government has announced record funding for schools, and in particular the Cotswolds, set to benefit from an increase of one and a half uh, million pounds in 24-5 compared to 23-4, it is important to see what is happening on the ground in the schools. And whilst uh, she had enough money for her uh, basic teaching, she did make the point that in a small rural school there was very little money at all left for the other things like cleaning, teaching, uh, cleaning, uh, maintenance of the school, and all of these other, uh, uh, the caretaker, the administrator, all these uh, different functions any school has to provide, but a small school with very limited overhead is particularly uh, uh, disadvantaged in those uh, respects. And she also made the point that concerns revolve around the number of pupils attending the school overall, because there are lots of small schools in the area and how often small village schools are not bringing enough pupil funding to cover the running costs of the school, ensuring they have administrators, caretakers, cleaners, as I say. But particularly relevant to this debate, she said an increase in pupils with special educational needs and disabilities, SEND, was also raised, and how extremely difficult it is to get an EHCP statement in Gloucestershire. So I do think there's a bit of a... Although the pressure on SEND overall is there as a country, I do think there is a little bit of a postcode lottery uh, in um, uh, uh, pupils being able to get these statements. In fact, in her school, there were no pupils with a statement at all. Um, so I think that is something we really need to address. And I look forward to really what the Minister has to say, because in addressing this whole problem of absenteeism, we have to work very closely between the local education authorities uh, 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 and the Department of Health to deal with not only pupils that haven't got a statement, but others that have got severe mental health problems, to see with increasingly better knowledge, thank goodness, how we can help those children and pupils with these complex problems. Mr Twig, I'm grateful to you for allowing me to participate in this debate. I call the uh, Shadow Minister, Helen Hayes. Thank you very much, Mr Twig. It's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship today. 